Welcome to the July 2020 Rust Electricity Guide. This is a basic electricity guide. It's nothing for experts or people who have been tinkering with the electricity system for over a year now, but if you're new to the electricity system, you will get some value out of this because it can seem pretty daunting at first to learn all the different things that you can do with electricity. So for starters, let's say you want to add a ceiling light to your base. You know, you need lights in your base. If you use a, uh, if you craft a wiring tool, they don't cost much to craft three or five high quality. Craft one of those, put up a ceiling light, and you can see there's a power in and a pass through. Power in simply means where is my power coming from? If you click that, you can add it to a number of different power sources in the game. Solar panels, they provide 20 power at full sunlight. There's a small generator that runs on low grade fuel. I don't recommend these because they burn through low grade really, really fast. It's also a wind turbine, and the wind turbines put out a ton of power, but they're pretty expensive. I think they're 500 scrap at Bandit Camp. You can get the solar panel at the outpost for 75 scrap. It's a, a great choice as well. So hook it up to whichever one that you can afford, and you have lights. There's also a pass-through. You can see that some items in the rust have a pass-through. If you want more than one ceiling light, just plug one up and click the pass-through into the power in on the ceiling light and now you have two lights. Not every electrical item in Rust has a pass-through, so you just have to tinker with it and find out which ones have it and which ones don't. So I'm sure if you've hooked up to the solar panel you see a glaring problem here and that's whenever it turns nighttime, whenever you need the lights the most, they're not going to work anymore. The wind turbine, you can run into the same problem because the power fluctuates a lot with wind turbines. They can go from anywhere to 0 to 150 power. The higher up you, you go with a wind turbine, in other words, if you put it like on top of your base or eight stories up, it's going to be less power fluctuation, but they still fluctuate quite a bit. And that creates problems for things like auto turrets and lights that you want to be on all the time. So how do we fix that? We fix that with batteries. So you do have to have a power source for electricity in Rust. You also need a battery. Batteries solve a number of problems with electricity in Rust. The first is, it doesn't have to be sunlight all the time for a solar panel, and it, it doesn't have to be windy all the time for a wind turbine, because if you're producing power through a solar panel all the, you know, whenever it's available, and through the wind turbine whenever it's available, the battery will store that. It'll store all the power that you're generating and only use what it needs to power your circuit, to power your lights, to power your auto turret. Another reason I wanted to make this video is because this has not always been the case. I'm sure y'all have seen a lot of YouTube videos saying infinite power circuit or learn how to use a blocker to to charge and to charge your batteries and use lights at the same time, things like that. You don't have to do that anymore. There's a, a huge uh, a update to the electricity system in November 2019. Those complex circuits just to run batteries are not needed anymore. How batteries work now is if you have power, let's just say 100 power from your power source going into the battery, and your battery only has, say, a couple of lights connected to it, it's not going to draw all the power at once. It's only going to use the power that it needs, and it'll store the rest of it. And again, before November 2019, this was not the case, but it is now. So if you're new to the electricity system and you're trying to get your first electric system set up in your base in rust don't watch any videos that are that are created before november 2019 because they're very outdated none of that complex blocker uh, you know uh, uh, or circuit stuff is needed anymore so as long as your your power from your sources is greater generally speaking greater than what you're using you're good to go so you can see we have a, a solar panel here connected to an auto turret and some players ask, well, why do I have to have a battery at all? Why not just connect straight to the solar panel? Well, the obvious thing is, whenever it turns nighttime, your auto turret turns off. That's that's no good. It also means if you lose the solar panel for any reason, the auto turret will turn off. Same thing with your lights. They're dependent on the power source. Whereas if you put a battery in between them, the item, the turret or the light, will run off of the battery in the meantime until you can log on to fix it or until you can figure out what's going on. The large battery is the best. That's what you should be striving for. They're expensive. They cost 50 high quality to craft. You also can't buy them anywhere. You have to find them in crates or buy them from other players. But they're totally worth it. They put out a, a hundred power, and it's 
essentially the go-to for electricity and rust. Medium battery is also good. It puts out 50 power. You can buy them at Bandit Camp for 75 scrap. These are a great alternative if you can't find a large one. The small batteries suck. They, you can find them in boxes and crates and things like that. You can't buy them anywhere. They only put out 10 power, but they're also really cheap. Only 10 high quality to craft. They're fine if you're going to run some lights, but they will. They are not good for auto turrets. They're not good for any type of circuitry more than just a couple lights. So you really, you want to start with the medium battery and eventually graduate to the large battery whenever you can. One thing I do want to say, and a lot of players don't know this, is they the large batteries will put out 100 power, but there's a 20% battery tax on power coming in. In other words, if you're going to expend, if, if you want to run 10 auto turrets, and the auto turrets take 10 power each, that's 100 power that you're going to be using. Well, the large battery will hold 100 power, but the problem is the there's a 20% power tax, meaning you need 120 power coming in to expend 100 power. So if your active usage here, right now it says zero, but if you had 10 turrets plug up to it, it would say 100. That means you need 120 power coming in. So make sure that you are you have 20% more power coming into the battery than you're expending. So your power in needs to be 120, for example, and for a power out of 100 or an active usage of 100 here. So in this example here, we have an auto turret, but this time the battery is in between it. So let's say you're getting raided, you have solar panels on your roof, and the raiders destroy your roof, and you lose your solar panel. Uh, the auto turret keeps going because it's connected to the battery. And the batteries will last quite a long time. If you have a, a large battery set up, you're going to be good for a few hours with your circuit, as long as it's not something absolutely insane. So the, the raiders, you know, if they go for the top of your base and they try to destroy your wind turbine, or if they try to destroy your solar panels, the batteries are going to keep your turrets running for as long as they can until you can fix it or hopefully log on or repel the raid attack. Look at these solar panels here. You can see how they're all bunched up against each other. You can do that and it's totally fine. They don't have to be spread apart or anything like that. These solar panels are stacked on top of each other and they still get the full amount of power in. So whenever you see them stacked like this, it's totally fine. You're going to get all the power. As far as placement goes, a lot of YouTubers and YouTube videos try to say that there's a perfect solution that will work for everyone. Kind of. So if you look at the map, let's say that... This is a, a, a map that we're playing on. There's north, south, east, and west. The sun, generally speaking, rises in the east and sets in the west. So it's going to rise over here, and then it's going to go across the sky and eventually set over here. Well, some videos say, well, so you know, point here. If, if the sun's rising over here and setting over here, you need to point some of your solar panels east and some of them west. That's that's not really the best way to do it. The best way to do it is to point them north or south. So if your base is on the south side of the island, you want your solar panels facing north so that they capture sunlight for the whole day. If the sun is rising over here and going across the sky over this direction, if your panels are facing north, in other words, you know, upward on the map, so to speak, they'll be taking in sunlight the whole day. If your base is on this side of the map, you want them facing south so that your as the sun rises and sets east and west, it'll capture sunlight for the whole time. Now, there's no perfect solution here. Sometimes, depending on where your base is located, you're going to have to adjust a little bit, and that's totally fine. But just don't place them flat out east and west because you're only going to take in half of the power that, you know, as soon as the sun gets across the midpoint in the sky, you're not going to get any power for the rest of the day. How do you combine multiple power sources together? So if you have a bunch of solar panels and you need to connect them together, or if you get crazy with your clan and you have 10 wind turbines, you can connect them all together into a single power source. It makes it a lot easier to design circuits whenever your powers are all coming into one thing together. And to do that, you use root combiners. Those are these little red devices here. They're, there's nowhere to buy them. You have to find them. So you're going to be hunting around in monuments and boxes and things. You can find one and blueprint it. But they're extremely powerful. And the way they work is they take two power sources. So let's take this first one here. And then you take a second power source. And now the output is both of those combined. And then you can do the same thing for all the others. 
take one panel here and one panel here, combine them together, and now you have a combined total power. And then you could daisy chain them together. Take this one, plug it into this root combiner, and this one, and plug it into this one. And now you can see that the total combined out is 68. And you can do that for all of these. Combine them all together. I'm not going to make your watchman do all these, but you would eventually get to the point where they're all connected together until you have one single power out. And then your big power out will go into your batteries. That's definitely the best way to do it. And then after that, if down the road you need to add more power, if you get into, into one of those freak show bases and you run out of power, you can always add more. Say we want to add this wind turbine to it, you just put down another root combiner and you take the power from the wind turbine, add it here, and then disconnect wherever this is going to. And now you have the combined power out for everything. So it's really easy to to add to your existing power sources with root combiners. Just add another root combiner and keep going. So let's design a small circuit, a, a typical circuit that a new player in Rust or just a, a basic circuit that almost every player will need. Everybody needs auto turrets, everybody needs lights. So how do we do that? First, let's hook our power source into the battery. We have a large battery here. You can see we have 137 power going in. Plenty, absolutely plenty. We need to power two lights and two auto turrets. The best way to do that is with electrical branches, which are extremely, extremely powerful in rust. And a lot of newbies to electricity don't use them. They use splitters instead. Splitters are, I won't say they're worthless, but they're almost worthless. <laughs> electrical branches are going to be better in almost every situation. So how a branch works is, I'll put one on the wall here. The power comes in, so the, you know from the, it's, the power is going to come from the battery into the branch, and then the branch has two splits. There's a branch out and a power out. Branch out simply means how much power do you want going to a branch, you know, one channel or one split, and you can press E and configure that. If we want to send power to four ceiling lights, or sorry, two ceiling lights, we need four power. So I'm going to put four. That means that all the power that's coming out of the branch. Well, it'll it'll send four power from the, from this branch out to the ceiling lights. So let's go ahead and hook this up. I'm going to hook this the power into the battery. And we see the branch out. Notice the tooltip here. It says 99 power. That doesn't mean it's using 99 power. That's something that a lot of players get confused about. Just ignore that. It's Sometimes it can help with troubleshooting. It's basically the potential power that's available. It's not the power actually being used. So uh, again, press E to configure the branch power. So the branch out is going to have four power going to it. Let's go ahead and hook the ceiling lights up. There's the first one. And then I'm going to hook the pass-through up to the next one. And now you can see the pass-through here says zero. That means there's no power remaining to continue flowing. But if I were to go back to the branch and change the four to a six, I'm going to go back over here and you can see that the pass-through now says two. So if I wanted to hook up another signal light, I could. Now I need to power the auto turrets. And auto turrets don't have a pass-through like lights do. In other words, the power stops here. So what do we need? We need more branches. So I'm going to hook up one more branch and then a third branch. Here the power out on a branch, it means send all the rest of the power available through this channel here. So if the battery has you know, a total of 100 power available, first it's going to send 6 to the branch and then it's going to send all the rest to it or it, all the rest of the power will be available in the power out so we need to send that to the next electrical branch so connect it to the power in and now set the amount of power we need for an auto turret remember auto turrets take 10 power so i'm going to set it to 10 branch out so the branch out will go to the auto turret Put a gun in the auto turret. By the way, you can put weapon flashlights on the gun, and then you have this really cool spotlight auto turret, which looks really cool. So it, if you're new to Rust or new to the auto turrets and electricity, put a weapon flashlight on there. They're really, really cool. It helps light up your base and light up, light up the surroundings at night. 
So I've, I've went to the branch out, I've made sure the tin power is flowing, and now I'm going to go to the power in. And now there's our turret. We need our other turret to be set up, so I'm going to send the rest of the power to the next branch. And you got to send tin power to this branch. Branch out to the next turret. And you would continue doing this for however many turrets you have. And now your other turret is going. And now we can set up a fourth branch for the rest of the power. And if we go over here, you can see the active usage is only 28. 10 for each auto turret, and then enough for the lights. And each of the branches consumes one power, so we're using 28 power. But you don't have to set up any special circuitry or anything to stop all the power from being discharged. It's only using 28 power, so that's, that's all it'll use. It'll store the rest of the power coming in. Auto turrets, a lot of times there's a, a good reason to turn them off, as in if a, a friendly player is coming or if you need to change the settings on them or if you need to refill the ammo or if your friends are coming over and they need to authorize on it, we need to turn the, the turrets on and off. The best way to do that is to use a switch. You can find the switches in boxes, they're very, very common. Just hit some barrels and look in crates on the wipe day and you're going to find a switch. Research that, put it on the wall. And we need to put this in front of the auto turrets, if that makes sense. We need to put the switch in front of the flow of electricity of the auto turrets. Remember, the flow of electricity for the auto turrets starts right after the ceiling lights. So instead of going to the, the directly to the auto turrets, I'm going, going to take this and put it to the switch instead. So let's take it to the switch. power in of the switch, sorry, electric input, and then output needs to go over to the branch. And then you turn on, and you see you can turn on the auto turrets and turn them off. All this switch does is it says send power through if it's on, disable all power if it's off. So if you want to turn your turrets on and off, you just hit the switch. By the way, put this switch somewhere where other people can't access it. Don't put it on the outside of your base. Don't put it at the the right in the entrance of your base where uh, raiders can just hit it and turn it off. Make sure it's in your main loot area or somewhere safe where only you can access it or only your team can access it. If you need for the for for further power to come out of this, you, you know the 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 switch right now is turning all of the power. Is turning the turrets off and all the power after it. You can put the switch after the branch out here and it basically in between these two and then it will turn the turrets off but still allow power to come through for anything else you want it to run. So just make sure that you, you put the, the switch where you want it and so it doesn't turn off all the lights in your base and all the turrets and everything all at once. Make sure it's only in between the power source and the turrets that you actually want it to turn off if that makes sense. Okay, that's the July 2020 Rust Basic Electricity Guide. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks.